difference. When it comes to evaluating a position, the integrity of the pawn structure is one of the most important elements to consider. A pawn structure can be unhealthy in two different ways. Either it contains weak pawns or weak squares. While weak pawns are relatively easy to understand, weak squares are more difficult to spot and my opinion is that they don't get enough appreciation. So if you start to focus on detecting weak squares and the methods to exploit them or to prevent them in your position, you might make a huge jump in your overall chess skills. This game here is a very good example for what I want to say. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, we see the Spanish opening on the board and black is playing the big main line. So what we see here is the closed Spanish. Now that the e4 pawn is protected by the rook, white threatens to win the pawn by the bishop takes c6, d takes c6, knight takes e5. Hence, we mostly see b5 here. Bishop b3, d6, c3, castles. This is the main line. And now, normally white plays h3 in order to prevent bishop g4 after he plays d4. But in this game, we see white playing a bit more passively. d3 is possible, but it's a bit lame. I wouldn't recommend it. But it's not so much about the opening. This is about middle game strategy here. Bishop c2, c5. So black chose to play in the style of the Chigorin variation of the main line by unblocking his c pawn with knight a5. Now white should not play d4 because after cd cd bishop g4 black achieved instant equality by putting the d4 pawn under pressure. Hence in the game white preferred the more restrained knight b2, the typical way to develop the queen's knight in the Spanish. Rook e8, knight f1. From here, the knight has two options. In both cases, white wants to eye the light squares of black's position. Now, the best move would have been knight c6 with equality, but this is not so much about the opening. That's why we go through this phase of the game rather quickly. d4, finally. White can push his d pawn, and black should have answered now with c takes d, c takes d, e d, knight e4, bishop e7, with near equality for black. Instead, black played queen c7. This move you also find in the Chigorin variation. And now black should have taken the opportunity to close the position and gain further space with d5. Um, you might have seen my video on Anatoly Karpov, Karpov the master of restriction. There in the game Karpov against Unziker, we saw a bad black knight. This can also happen here after bishop d7, question mark b3. Now the knight cannot go to um, c4 anymore and is caught on the horror axis. This is my wording for it. This is a horror, sorry, no, this was the wrong button here. This is a horror axis, a5, d7, d8. The knight is not getting anywhere. So there are not only bad bishops existing sometimes you have a bad knight on the board and this is a very good example. So after d5, black has to play knight c4 to get the knight on a better circuit. For instance, after b3, knight d6, the knight's position is decent enough. 
white is still slightly better because he governs more space. Now, after queen c7, white didn't play d5, but instead knight e3. This is a bit doubtful because black could have now again changed uh, the structure. cd, cd, ed, knight c4, and this position is about equal, actually. <clears throat> but black didn't grab this opportunity, played a silent move, instead bishop f8 it's a normal looking move but now white has again the option to grab space and now he actually did so by playing d5 now we're having the same structure or let's say almost the same pawn structure as in the karpov Unzika game now um, if black plays a nondescript move like g6 again white plays b3 sidelining black's knight with a clear advantage so black instead played c4 which is better now the knight has a potential square on c5 so the next moves black would do here is knight the straightforward knight b7 knight c5 White has nothing better than playing b4, but that's good enough here to claim a big advantage, as you will see. <clears throat> so now black cannot move his knight because, again, the knight would be trapped, like in the game Karpov Unzika. The knight can go to d8, and there is not so much to find on that square. So that's a bad knight there on b7, obviously. So black played the superior move c takes b3 instead because now he can tra transfer his knight to the square c5 as a pawn c3 is hanging. So white has no time for b4 due to queen takes c3. Bishop b2 defending the pawn and now of course threatening to dominate the knight with b4 knight c5 before uh, the door is closed and now after queen b1 <coughs> we can um, now um, just uh, take stock and say white left the opening with a clear advantage because he has more space available the most important pawns here defining the setting um, are the pawn d5 and black's pawn d6. So the d5 pawn is white's master pawn, if you so will. It uh, blocks the d pawn and also controls squares deep in black's camp. So black is notoriously short of space. White can play on both wings. Uh, he is better also on the king side but not that much compared to the queen side. So white will try to uh, advance his pawns on the queen side and will make progress just there. Now black made a mistake, rook b8. As, we, as you will see, the a6 pawn will come under pressure. So, so it would have been better to play a uh, queen b7, leaving the rook on a8. Okay, rook b8 question mark but as i mentioned before the position was already clearly better for white now white played d4 the knight has to go back to d7 bishop d3 and you see it is cl quite clear what white has to do here white has to open up the position and this will happen with the advance c3 c4 that's the plan and that is also threatening here so black has to play knight b6 preventing c4 but white has means and ways to realize c4 eventually <coughs> sorry and that's why he's playing rook c1 now um yeah knight a4 is 
uh, what happened in the game. Another idea would have been to block the C pawn with knight C4. The engine slightly favors this move, but as you can see, after knight takes C4, B takes C4, bishop E2, black will have to struggle with a permanently weak pawn on C4. So this position is also clearly better for white. In the game, we saw knight A4, C4, finally, and now queen B7, removing the queen from the influence of the rook on c1. Now this position is, in my opinion, the most interesting one of the whole game. Uh, it might be useful for you to press on pause here and think about white's next move. Um, yeah, do it or don't. Now I tell you my ideas when looking at this position. So I tell you what would come to my mind and how to find the best move here. Chess, after all, is a very logical game and that's why you can very often come to the right move by making a static analysis of the position, static analysis or logical analysis. Let's just clarify the terms I just used. Anal analyzing uh, a game is quite uh, commonly used. It means trying to figure out which are the best moves for both parties and then you can create a um, variation tree. This general term analysis means you incorporate um, static or long-term ideas and plannings together with um, short-term and concrete aspects like tactical implications, direct peace interactions. The term static analysis just discards all dynamic factors. So it breaks down the position into its long-term or structural elements in order to come up with a long-term plan if not interfered by um, concrete dynamic interaction right so this is a good first step in order to to come up with your best move so what would you do if you are undisturbed by your opponent now how is this analysis happening we see why has space advantage on the queen side defined by the pawn d5. So the queen side is where white wants to play. So um, in order to play on the queen side, white needs all or most of his forces on the queen side. And as you can see, this already is the case. Black has problems to bring his forces to the queen side. The knight f6 doesn't participate right now, neither does the rook e8 or the bishop f8. That is the magic of space advantage. You have more capacity to maneuver your pieces. Uh, one side note to the topic of space advantage. Actually, it's, it's the most easy way, very often, to obtain an advantage because your opponent might play openings where he shows a certain disrespect for space and just concedes too much space to you. And the only thing you have to do is just grab it. In this case, it was the move d4, d5, grabbing the space that was there for the taking, claiming an easy advantage. So disrespect for space is it's a bit like an illness many players have. They, they undervalue space and you can profit from that. Okay, coming back to this position. Now, what you also should always be aware of is what pieces of you are badly placed. Think of uh, what place, uh, pardon me, what piece uh, is the most misplaced one? What is the worst placed piece for white in this position? Well, if the solution is, 
it is uh, the knight f3. <clears throat> Actually, this is not so um, straightforward for some. I, I had I asked this uh, question in <clears throat> my training sessions, online training sessions, and even strong players didn't really notice that the knight f3 is misplaced. Of course, there's a notion that f3 and c3 are the best squares for the knight. This is surely the case in the starting position, before move one and also in the opening, very often f3 is the best square. But as the pawn structure changes, uh, the evaluation of whether a piece is placed good or, or badly um, has to change as well. So the f3 knight is biting on pawn granite. Cannot take this pawn, cannot go here, cannot go here. So we have to improve this knight. Now, another question is, where are the ideal squares for our pieces? And the best thing that can happen to you is, is to find the ideal square for your worst place piece. This is what this game is very much about. Now, how can you improve the knight? Surely you could move it to e1, c2, and yeah, a3, adding to the pressure on black's b pawn. But black can defend the pawn with bishop d7. So it's not to be seen how white can profit from this maneuver in the short term. There's a better idea. So now you have a second chance to come up with the right move here. Try to combine peace improvement and also now add yet another element, weak squares. Because this is an overall topic here of our lecture. Where are the weak squares in black's position? If you have a look, you can find them easily. A5 is weak and C6. This is the most juicy weakness of black's position, the C6 square, because it is so deep in black's position. So this would be a nice outpost for our pieces. So how can we bring the knight to C6? Now the solution comes. Bishop E1. I just summed up all logical elements, all basic elements of the position, and we have to connect the dots. We have to put all elements into one bucket, stir it up, and come up with the right plan. And this is transferring the worst place piece to the very best of squares, which is C6. And as you will see, the, the knight will finally end up on this very square. Chess can be easy at times. <clears throat> if you study your pawn structures, then you know in this given pawn structure, the C6 square is weak. And now you know also how to exploit it. Chess is logical and sometimes a simple logical deduction can bring you the right move. Bishop d7, knight d2, rook c8, knight b3. Now, uh, the position is already won for white, actually. So big is his advantage on the queen side. Bishop e7, <clears throat> maybe not the best move, but as I said, it, uh, the position was lost anyways. The move is not unlogical, though. The bishop either wants to go to b6 via d8 or to g5 after the knight f6 has moved away. Black is also uh, intending to improve his pieces and of course the bishop on f8 did not contribute to the battle of the queen side. Now white would have uh, won with rook c2. I just show you now one long sing single and simple and very straightforward line so you can, can really understand why I claim this position to be won. I just make my moves here quite quickly. 
This is also quite remarkable, by the way, how White, let's go back to moves, White actually cleared the first rank for the Queen to finally end up on F1, attacking the B5 pawn. This is a typical Karpovian maneuver, by the way. Karpov was very famous for clearing the first rank and then playing a move like Queen F1. So, once again, Rook C2, just without any more comments here. Black cannot do a lot. Black is biding his time. And now, after a final preparation, that means the knight has to guard the square c3, white can finally strike. And the strike has the shape of entering the weak sport c6 with our knight. So the key topic of our lecture, knight c6, let, and let's say rook takes e6, what else? And finally, there's a double attack. And now with the knight still on e3 instead of um, d1, black could play knight uh, c3. That's why we had to prepare this. Uh, knight jump to c6 by knight d1, but this is clearly one. So that was white's best way to interpret this position. But in the game, white played some um, sub prime moves, rook a2, not the best move, but the idea is also quite logical. White wants to double rooks in the c file. Queen a7, and now knight a5 would have been best, but that's not so important for us. White played rook uh, to c2, doubtful move. And now black should have played knight e8. Uh, pardon me, he did play, so he should have uh, played this move actually it was the best move he should not have played now um, I get it got it straight he should not have played this bishop d8 plan intending bishop b6 because if the bishop left the square c5 unguarded white finally is able to advance the c pawn of course with immediate destruction the pawn will end up on c6 and black can then resign so that is the problem with this uh, bishop uh, d8 b6 idea um, not working in all instances. So knight e8 was the idea. So now the bishop might be able to move to g5 in a given moment. Not the very next move though, because again, black has to be aware of the push to c5. Yes, now my uh, white made the mistake. I just introduced uh, the topic of being flexible with the c-pawn, right? In order to, to be threatening c4, c5. So white now took on b5, question mark. White should have um, maintained the tension. And of course, if now bishop g5, which was strong in the game, then c5 winning again, right? So black should have played the move like rook c7 and um, white then would have to find some good moves. But this is how white should have proceeded. Instead white took on b5 and that was premature. Resolving the tension makes it easier for black to deploy his bishop. <coughs> takes Queen takes a b. Bishop takes b5 by the way would lose due to knight f5. The idea is bishop attacks b5, then the rook cannot recapture because of queen takes a4, and if the pawn recaptures, knight c6 would win uh, the exchange. That is the threat. But even if uh, black um, prevents this loss of the exchange after knight c6, he would be completely lost because the knight on c6 is quite annoying for black. You can see that um, black has really no way of um, defending the queen side with a knight on c6. So instead, black played the superior a takes b5, and now finally the knight is landing on a5, which was the idea all the way after bishop e1. Bishop g5, 
bishop d2. This position here is clearly better for white, but unfortunately not won anymore. White didn't play the best of moves after he temporarily achieved a one position. I already told you this. Now, black should have played rook c8, but let's jump over this line. Um, rook a8 happened, question mark. g3, very strong move. Uh, white just wants to question the bishop on g5. You know, white wants to get rid of that bishop. Uh, it's about restriction. White wants to expel the bishop from g5. And that's why g3 is so strong. Black could now make some space for the bishop in order to maintain the bishop on that diagonal. But after h4, bishop h6, knight c6, exploiting the soft spot of black's position, queen d7, check. White can exchange bishops, and now the queen is very strong on the diagonal. And I'll just show you very quickly, this is a line, it's not the game, right? I'll show you very quickly how white can exploit his uh, dominant positions in the c-file and uh, with his knights on e7 and f5. White can just go for the attack with g4, exclamation mark, takes and now h5 in order just to break up black's position. Knight c8, rook c8, exclamation mark, in order to keep the knight e7 stable. Rook takes e8 and now h6, that's a breakthrough. The idea is h7 and then queening, so black has to do something about this. For instance, king g8, but now after pawn takes, pawn, knight g7, knight g6, we see white is ending up with two extra pawns. So h5 wouldn't have saved black. Black instead played uh, bishop d8, anticipating h4. Now uh, the, the bishop might go to b6, who knows. But after knight c6, white completed his journey with his knight from f3 all the way to c6. And this position, again, is won for white. How did White um, realize his advantage? Well, I, I'm showing you this quickly. Queen a6. Now came quite a sub-standard move. But have in mind, this is move 34. And the worst moves in a game of chess are normally made between move 30 and move 40 because of time trouble. So we should not be too harsh here on the players. It's move 34 and now white played um, a bad move. He should have played h4. h4 just restricting the bishop d8. But he played uh, bishop e1 and now black could have played bishop g5. And actually after bishop d2, knight b6, the position is only slightly better for white because um, black has some um, potential in the a-file. I'll give you just a short line. h4 takes, takes, knight f6. Now the idea is to play the knight to c4. And if the bishop takes the knight, and then the e4 pawn will become very weak. For instance, f3, in order to bolster up this e4 pawn, but that's a mistake. Now knight takes d5 works, attacking the bishop e3, and after bishop f2, question mark, Black is winning with rook c8. Some tactics also come into play here. But let's go back to our game. After bishop e1, black did not exploit this mistake by bishop g5. He, he played the bishop to b6. And now white could have built up a one position again with knight f5, but let's just, uh, let's just jump over those lines. I want to make it uh, quick and not to have this video too long again. So now, Queen e2, question mark, knight f5 would win. Knight c7, question mark, black would have taken on e3. And um, yeah, he equalized actually. But he played knight c7 and now after knight f5, white is back on track. Bishop takes f5, I mean, you cannot really lift, uh, you cannot really let this knight f5 l uh, living. 
because there is a threat against the pawn and also there are some queen g4 ideas so bishop f5 is more or less forced but now we we don't take with the pawn we check here with white king f8 and now knight f5 this position is completely lost for black cannot be any more lost than this you see all the problem points i marked them yellow the d6 pawn is weak this pawn was actually weak all the way along in this pawn structure the square c6 you already know that the b5 pawn is weak and also the g7 pawn as white can play uh, queen c4 uh, queen g4 pardon me so this queen g4 idea has to be respected as well <coughs> now the game com concluded as follows black protected the pawn d6 he has to but now the rook could exploit the square c6 we saw the knight already there but of course many pieces can use that c6 square the rook the queen and the knight previously so black is completely lost he cannot play knight e8 because of bishop takes b5 so he played f6 now um if now white takes on d6 uh, i think that would be premature so let's say um knight e6 takes takes we see bishop f2 takes and now queen d6 i think that's premature i didn't analyze it beforehand but the engine did not um prompt me to take on d6 so i think the engine dislikes that too so let's go here back to our game in our game white said well i have all the time in the world i improved my position king g2 is the second best move here actually according to the engine now it's threatening this uh, capture here because there is no bishop takes f2 with check as you just saw now after king g2 queen a7 queen g4 g7 hanging knight e8 uh, white could take the pawn on on b5 so white is not only having a, a one position a position with a, a huge superiority but also now has an extra pawn rook b8 rook c2 bishop d4 black is lost cannot do anything bishop e8 rook e8 and now the last move of the game was rook a2 because the idea is simply to take the knight and then after queen a4 queen takes the g7 checkmate if black would play g5 here then the queen would penetrate on the king side i hope you liked that game so it's a perfect example in my opinion um, for the combination of um, bad squares or weak squares in the camp of your opponent and finding the ideal square for your own pieces see you in the next video then bye bye